Hello and welcome to Samdance Couch. In my last video I reviewed the surround sound receiver OnQ TX-RZ50 with its big feature, the Direct Live Digital Room Correction. Since this feature is very important, but not necessarily self-explanatory, I decided to show you how I set up my system. The general process itself is not difficult, but to achieve the best sounding result, specifically tailored for your room and your speakers, you will need to do some manual adjustments. This is very important. You need to generally understand what can be done, what shouldn't be done and what to watch out for what might go wrong during the setup process. I have been tweaking my setup for several weeks now and researched this topic a lot. I also contacted the Direct Live Support, who helped me answer some questions that I had myself. Big shout out to the Direct Support team for being supportive and always very quick with their replies. So let me show you how I started the Direct Live measuring process and how I manually perfected it. The setup will be the same, not only for the OnQ TX RZ50, but also for the OnQ TX NR7100, and will be similar for any other AV receiver brand which has the Direct Live feature integrated. Please keep in mind that the settings I will show you are specific to my setup and can't be directly translated to your setup, but the general rules apply to the whole process of it. First we have to measure the room acoustics with a microphone. If you have a receiver that came with a microphone, we are ready to go. For the measuring process, you can use a smartphone or a tablet and download the Direct Live app from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. The app does its job and seems to be the more convenient way to go at first, but I recommend downloading the Direct Live software for your computer. The Direct Computer software is updated more frequently, lets you load external target curve settings into your setup and is easier to configure, especially when you have a larger screen. I definitely recommend doing the calibration this way. It is available for free for Windows and Mac computers. I will use my laptop to demonstrate the setup in this video. First go to the Direct Live website and download the software for your operating system. The software itself is free and the license you need is already inside your AV receiver, which will be automatically recognized once you have the program installed and running. You will need to create an online account to use the software, but thankfully this is fairly quickly done. Install the Direct Live software and launch it. Make sure that your AV receiver is turned on and connected to your network, with either Wi-Fi or Ethernet. You can use a third-party certified measuring microphone, like this one from Mini DSP, which you will need to connect to your computer using USB. But if you have a receiver that came with a microphone, then you can just use that one and don't need to spend extra money. Connect the supplied microphone directly to your AV receiver. Log in with your new Direct Live account that we just created and the software will start to search your internal network for your receiver. Once the search is complete, your receiver should show up. Click on it to start the first step, the volume calibration. From this step on forward, please make sure that you have no background noise in your room. Avoid talking, walking around and if you can, turn off any air conditioning, aquarium air pumps or fan heaters. Also close all the windows in your room. And if you have neighbors, maybe wait for a good quiet time in the day to do the room correction. We want the room to be as quiet as possible so that our measurements are not being thrown off. All your connected speakers are being displayed. Each one of them with a separate volume control. You can also control the master output volume and the microphone gain. Place your microphone in the sweet spot of your listening position where you'll listen to your audio most of the time. The best way to do this is to either prop up your mic on some pillows, or even better, use a microphone stand or a tripod to reach the height of where your head and ears will be when you are sitting in your main listening position. Make sure that the mic always points upwards towards the ceiling. Now we will determine the volume and mic gain settings. We start off by setting the mic gain to a low setting. This way we can try to avoid the mic accidentally picking up any background noises other than the test tone that might occur during our measurements. Click on the play button underneath each individual speaker to play back a test tone. Make sure each speaker outputs the test tone and that all speakers are around the same volume. Adjustments can be made for each speaker with the volume slider shown underneath the speaker icon. Then adjust the master output volume to the volume at which you'll normally listen to audio. When everything sounds even and every speaker outputs the test tone, we can proceed. 
Now it is time to select an arrangement. You have three options. Tightly focused imaging correction is for a listening position where you'll always sit pretty straight up and don't move around much, like for example on a chair or an armchair. This option requires only nine measuring points. But if you have a couch in your living room, which probably most of us do, making a setup for such a small area doesn't make much sense. The second option, focused narrow imaging correction, is for larger rooms and a bigger listening area. It requires 13 measuring points. The third option is the wide imaging correction, which takes several seating positions into account. It requires 17 measuring points. If you have a larger couch and have more than one person listening to audio, this is the best setting to choose. Since I have a big couch, more than one person watching movies with me and myself sometimes sitting in different positions when playing some games or just lounging out, I decided to go with this option which suits my setup best. After you selected your seating arrangement, click on proceed to measure. In the following graphic you see 17 around circles above the image of a couch, which represents each measuring point that we will have to measure. It not only represents the position, but also the height of where we will have to position our microphone when measuring each point, one after another. We start with the center one, the main position. It will be the most important measurement. Again, make sure that the room is as silent as possible and don't touch the microphone either, since that can also interfere with the results. Also make sure that your body is not in between the microphone and the speaker you are about to measure. Click on the center dot and then on the bottom center of the screen on the bottom measure selected position. A test tone will be played through each speaker separately, including your subwoofer. In my 5.1.4 setup, that means 10 test tone sweeps per measuring position of the microphone. After the first measuring point is completed, you can freely choose which point to measure next. The order doesn't matter, but we do have to measure all 17 spots to complete the room calibration. Having the microphone on a microphone stand or a tripod is going to help you here, since you can adjust the height pretty easily and the mic will always point upwards. Match the microphone position with the position you selected in the direct software and for each position click measure next position. If something happened during your measurement, like a sudden background noise, you can re-measure the measuring spot by clicking on the button re-measure selected position. The software will also tell you if the measuring was not perfect and tells you to repeat the last step. During your measurements, you most likely are going to get some error messages like recording is too loud, clipping, or recording is too low. Then you'll need to go back to the volume calibration screen and adjust the volume or open up the mic gain a little bit more. Don't worry, your already successfully measured spots will be saved and you can go right back to measuring the remaining spots after you adjusted your volume. When you are done with all 17 spots, click on Proceed to Filter Design. Now we can see the graph for each of our speakers, which you can select from the list on the far right. Usually the speakers are already grouped together for the front pair, the center speaker, surround back pair, the subwoofer and ceiling speaker pairs. If the speakers should not be correctly grouped together, you can manually fix this by dragging your speakers into the designated group. The impulse responsive are automatically set. You can look at the before and after the correction by clicking on Impulse Response on the top right. We can however manually adjust the target curve for the frequency response of the speakers that Direc automatically set up for us. The theoretical goal is to have a straight line at 0 dB throughout the frequency band and making it as even as technically possible. That is of course not possible since no real world speaker is able to reproduce such a perfect feedback. Depending on how good your speakers are, the software is going to try and compensate as much as possible to reach this target making your speakers sound better than ever before. Notice the straight line on the left and on the right of the graph. This represents the area of the frequency band that direct life is correcting. It is also called the curtain. You can manually adjust this area by dragging the left line or the right line depending how much you want the software to adjust the low or the high end of the frequency band. Normally you should not move the curtain beyond the displayed dotted line since that represents the end of the region direct life recommends adjusting. 
In my case though, the automatic detection for my front speakers was wrong. As you can see, the curtain doesn't go all the way up into the higher end of the frequency band of my front speakers. I manually move the right side of the curtain further to the right up to where the graph completely drops, to include this area as well. Should you see something similar in your measurements as well, I advise for you to move the curtain as well up to the area where you see the graphic is completely dropping down, showing the end of the frequencies your speakers can pre-produce. Now in a professional studio environment, it is desired to have the target curve as close to the 0 dB target at all frequencies. But in a home movie and gaming environment, we do want more bass that Direct has robbed us a little bit after the calibration. This is by design and even Direct itself says that a lot of users do go for the option to boost more bass back into the settings and I highly recommend doing this as well. To do so, we go to the low frequency area of our speakers and click on the target curve. We can manually make more markers on the line and then pull it upwards to make the specific frequency louder or push it down to lower that specific frequency. In the case of bass, we need to push the curve up. If you are not comfortable to manually drag the target curve or creating more target markers on it, you are able to load pre-created curves. The most famous ones are the ones called Harman target curves. For my speaker setup, I went with the plus 10 dB target curve, since that one simply sounds the best for my speakers. To load a target curve into your setup, go to the menu and select Load Target Curve and select which speaker groups the new curve should be loaded into. As a general rule, make sure that on the target curves below 120Hz should be the same curve for all speakers to match the bass and the LFE channel of the subwoofer. At any time, when you want to check what your filter actually sounds like, hit the Filter Export button and now you can choose to save the filter in one of the available slots inside your receiver. Onq has three slots available, so you can save three different filters if you want. Each input of your OnQ can also individually set to a specific filter slot. If you want, you could make a direct live filter specifically designed for listening to music, a filter just for games, and a third one for movies. It is up to you. I personally aim for one filter setting that is going to sound best for every audio source. It will take some time until you find the perfect setting, but it is worth it. To find good examples to adjust your sound quality to, I used a variety of top hits from a music streaming platform. Then I tested some scenes from big Hollywood blockbusters like Jurassic Park with the deep dinosaur footsteps. And then, as a third test, some Dolby Atmos games like for example Gears 5. Try to find the perfect balance between bold clean sound and deep LFE special effect sounds. If you feel like you messed up changing the target curve too much and you want to go back to the original measured target curve, just go into the menu and select Set Default Target Curve and then All Groups. You can also click on Take Snapshot on the bottom middle of the screen to make several undo points. And of course make sure you save your project in the menu, so you can always go back without having to go through the measuring process again. Here are my target curves that I use for my speaker setup. Before we can enjoy our new direct filter that we now transfer to our receiver, we need to check and manually adjust what might have gone wrong with the automatic measurement. We will do these adjustments in the settings menus of the receiver and not the direct software. Head to your receiver settings. Note that you can't change the distance settings anymore inside the receiver, since these are fixed by the direct live correction. First check your crossover numbers. In my case, the crossover settings were changed to completely wrong values. Make sure you correct this, since this is very important. Full range for big speakers, a lower number if you have bookshelf size speakers. Check your speaker manual for the recommended settings. 80Hz is usually correct for subwoofers. Now we have to check the volume settings for each individual speakers. 
Again, the automatic volume adjustment in my case was not correct. The goal is to have each speaker be at the same volume measured from your main seating position. You can set this up by just listening to the test tone of your receiver and play with the volume numbers. But the human ear can get confused really easily. So I recommend getting an SPL meter, for example from Amazon, or get an SPL meter app for your smartphone. Switch your SPL meter rating setting to position C, the response to slow, and choose a range. I recommend going with 70 dB here. 70 dB will be represented by the needle of the display hitting the zero of the scale. Hold the SPL meter or the smartphone mic at ear position at your primary listening position, facing upwards and play back the receiver test tone for each individual speaker, including your subwoofer. Make sure all speakers are around the same number, hitting around 70 dB. To tweak this, I have two tips. You can make your center speaker a few dBs louder to further enhance dialogue in movies, since this is the main channel where dialogue is mostly coming from. And since we measured and leveled our subwoofer with Direc, we can give the subwoofer a few more dB, between 2 to 4 dB, as well, if you feel that there is a lack of deep sound. When everything is correctly set up in the receiver settings, I highly recommend that you write down the numbers for your crossover and volume level settings. Or just take a screenshot with your phone. Every time we transfer a direct live filter from our computer to the receiver, these settings are going to get automatically changed and will have to be manually adjusted again. Keep that in mind, especially if you are going to keep adjusting your direct filter more often and keep transferring it back to your receiver. In the case of the Onkyo receiver, we have three slots available to save three different direct filter settings, like mentioned earlier. Make sure that you check that you have the correct slot selected for each input, since each input remembers which filter to use. And that is it. At this point your speaker should sound cleaner, more detailed and have a quicker, more sharp response as well. I'm very happy with my results, and my speakers sound better than they ever did before. I hope I could give you some more insight into the process of doing the direct live room correction. It can be intimidating, but I guarantee you it is worth the time that you invest. How are your experience with Direct Life? And what was your experience with it like? Let me know in the comments of this video. Thank you for watching and please consider giving this video a like if you enjoyed it. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel to never miss a video from us. See you next time on Sam Dance Couch. Mm -hmm.